Welcome to the Mary Mack Show, where we will be talking about your feelings, experiences, and pain following the death of a loved one. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you find yourself in this entire world, I welcome you. How are you doing, my friend, my warrior? I hope this week finds you well. Today, I'd like to share with you my memories of that fateful day 20 years ago this Saturday. I knew I might have a hard time doing this episode, but I really wanted to share with you my memories. You see, I grew up in New York City, and I have a great affinity for that city. And to this day, when I happen to watch a movie that shows the Twin Towers in the background, I still pause and I well up with tears. Not having those buildings in the skyline, well, it's just not the same. The Twin Towers, as the World Trade Center was often called, brought many significant memories for me. On the evening I finished my last class for my master's in business administration, my MBA, my parents picked me up and we headed down to a restaurant called Windows on the World, which was at the top of Tower One at the World Trade Center. They had made reservations to celebrate my achievement, and I remember my father ordering champagne. It was by far a magnificent restaurant. Several years later, I received my engagement ring on the 4th of July on the observation deck, also on the 107th floor. I remember the weather wasn't too clear, but it didn't matter. I couldn't think of a better place to officially start a new life. Over the years, I would attend various conferences and business meetings there. I remember how fast the elevators moved, and when the meetings were over, I'd go down to the complex where there were so many stores to choose from. It was like a mall within the big buildings. And then later, I would make my way to the subways to go uptown or home. The last time I enjoyed the towers was for my 40th birthday. My former husband booked a visit to Elizabeth Arden on Fifth Avenue for me for the day and then picked me up to celebrate at Windows on the World restaurant. Never could I have imagined it would be the last time I would enjoy that restaurant and those buildings. That summer, I wrote a book entitled Understanding Your Grieving Heart After a Loved One's Death, which is still available. On Monday, 9-10, my printer called to say they were sending out the galleys that day. But I didn't receive them until nearly a month later. All transportation had stopped after the attacks. On the morning of 9-11, and I cannot believe we are commemorating 20 years since terrorists killed our sense of safety, 
I was in Florida, where I still live now. I was awakened with the words, I think you might want to get up. Something has happened at the towers. I remember getting up quickly, and when I saw the happenings on the television, I stood in the middle of the living room with my hand over my mouth in disbelief. The first thing I did was pop a VHS tape in so I could record it all. And as it turned out, we just kept taping continually for the length of 60 hours, 10 tapes at six hours each. The irony is I never threw out those tapes and recently found them in a shoebox while going through some old things. This format is no longer used, but one day I will have them converted. I see it as a piece of history. It also occurred to me while standing there that somewhere I had photos of my 40th birthday dinner. I feverishly rummaged through all my photos, all my loose ones and albums, until I finally found those particular photos. We had been sitting at the windows in a booth, and you can see the table and sky outside. The windows in the towers were very narrow. That I do remember. And on that day, as I watched people holding on to the outside to gain air because they couldn't breathe, the anxiety in my body was growing, thinking what I would have done if I had found myself in that position. People, evil people, from somewhere far around the world, had coordinated a mass murder, not only in New York, but in D.C. and on a plane which crashed in Pennsylvania. And while I'm standing in the living room, I'm listening to the idiotic commentators as the towers were burning and people are leaping to their deaths, that they can't confirm that anything has happened in the towers. At that point, I'm screaming at the television. We're all watching this and you can't confirm anything? How asinine can you be? But what I couldn't believe was that one at a time they fell. And not in the way I believed they might collapse. I never thought they would implode. I thought if they fell, they would fall sideways because buildings built so strong don't implode. And to this day, after watching in disbelief, after each one imploded, I still believe the entire day's events were too suspicious for me. When I saw the wreckage of the Pentagon, there was no outline of a plane. As I kept watching the television, it was then that my thoughts went to my cousin Peter. He, like my uncle and his father before him, were on the fire department of New York, the FDNY. We didn't know where he was that day, and it took a while for him to get in touch with my aunt, his mother, that he was safe. As it turned out, Peter, who had taken the lieutenant's test, was on the list to be promoted. And after the FDNY lost 343 men in one day, he was promoted to lieutenant the following Sunday. I can still see the photo of him, his wonderful wife Maureen, and first daughter Caitlin at the ceremony. Peter and Maureen also had Grace at the time, and later Gabriella. I can't believe all three of their daughters are now in college. They are so precious to me. For the longest time, Pete worked on what was known as the pile at Ground Zero. This was where all the remains of the buildings had landed, along with all its victims. 
It was a struggle to try to find survivors while the pile was still burning. The families who hadn't heard from their loved ones and feared they had died hung pictures at Trinity Church and elsewhere with contact details, waiting patiently to have their spouse, parent, sibling, or child come home to them. And there were weeks where there were so many funerals, it was not possible to attend them all, especially for the fire department. One of the saddest memories was when the fire chaplain, Father Judge, a Catholic priest, was killed by debris that smashed through the North Tower lobby. Shortly after he was killed, and before the North Tower fell, his body was pulled from the lobby and he became the first recorded victim of September 11th. Peter lost many firefighter buddies that day. He worked on the pile for a very long time and it took a toll on him emotionally, along with all the other survivors of the FDNY. Many of them, over time, have died from lung diseases and other cancers because of the toxic fumes from the pile. He also honored the memory of his friends by creating a flagpole and a bench at his home. As time moved on, we went into Iraq and Afghanistan to find those responsible for the worst terror attacks on our home soil. This had never happened before. But the men who boarded those planes and flew them into the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and Shanksville, Pennsylvania, who hijacked each of them, actually were Saudi citizens. That will always have me perplexed. One of the ironies of that day was it was a beautiful, clear blue sky day. So many people commented on that. In New York City, it was the first day of school for a lot of children, so many of the parents who had personally taken them to school were late to work. It was also election day in the city, and others may have went to their respective polling places before work. These individuals were safe with their families that night. The World Trade Center represented the financial epicenter. People from around the world visited and worked in those buildings. Nearly 3,000 people died that day, representing 90 countries. Among them were Andrew Fisher, whose sister Nina was close friends with my brother. My cousin's husband, Brian, barely escaped with his life while working at the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. And years later, he told me his harrowing story about how he got out just in the nick of time to survive. I've heard stories of people who came into the towers to attend a conference at Windows on the World and lost their lives. I think of those who chose to leap to their deaths instead of being burned alive on the floors. When someone dies in a national tragedy, each time someone brings it up or the photos are splashed in the newspapers, magazines, television, or online, that scab that we thought was healed gets peeled off again. And I don't know if it will fully heal, because the scars for this day are so deep. This Saturday marks the 20th anniversary of a horrific day in the United States, and for people all around the world who also lost their loved ones. I couldn't let this day pass without acknowledging all those who were murdered and the family and friends they left behind. If you ever get to visit New York, D.C., or Shanksville, please spend time at their memorials. The 9-11 Museum in New York will leave you awestruck 
We spent several hours there, took an incredible tour, and could have spent even more time to see all that is there. The timeline where you hear the air traffic controllers and the calls from passengers to their loved ones on answering machines whom they knew they'd never see again were so heart-wrenching. And the pools of water and the engraved names of each victim along the edges will humble you. You can see the outline of both buildings on the concourse. As time has moved on since then, each year we read the names aloud of those murdered at that site. We honor them in that way. As a crime victim's rights advocate, each year, on the Sunday of Crime Victim's Rights Week, usually in April, we would read aloud all the names of murder victims at the ceremony. So when plans were being made for those victims of 9-11, they followed our lead in reading each name, and I was so grateful they did that. Yes, it takes most of the day, but we must always remember them as it was the deadliest terror attack in world history. So much has happened during the past 20 years. I often think of all the children who were born near or after 2001. They only know this from books and movies and what we can tell them of our experience. For those whose loved ones died that day, we stand with you to always honor their memory. Wherever in the world your loved one lived, we will be with you in spirit this Saturday, September 11th, 2021. Bless you, my friend.